first, could you take me through the final results of the evaporate study and sort of the clinical applicability of these results for clinicians? Certainly. So, um, you know, based on the, the robust results of Reduce It, uh, um, by Do Dr. Bott presented and published in New England Journal of Medicine a 25% event reduction um, with icosapent ethyl as compared to placebo, there was great interest in understanding the, the mechanism by which it, it benefits our patients. And we know it's not largely triglyceride reduction, so there must have been other factors. So we sought out to do a serial CT angiography study where we did a CT angio at baseline at nine months and at 18 months to ultimately look at uh, plaque um, progression to see if, if uh, icosapentethyl had some effect on regression of atherosclerosis. So that was kind of the background of Evaporate. And we presented the interim results at American Heart Association and the final results at the European Society of Cardiology. That's all we wanted. So if you wanted to dive into the specific results of Evaporate and what it showed us about plaque progression, that would be great. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, our results, our final results, as we presented, um, demonstrated significant regression uh, as compared to placebo of low attenuation plaque or or kind of a necrotic core, the the most vulnerable of plaque components that we can see uh, with imaging. And we use that as our primary endpoint because icosapentethyl has been demonstrated to have this effect on inflammation and oxidation. And we know that this kind of highly fatty necrotic core uh, might be most uh, uh, benefiting, most, uh, most greatly benefit by, by uh, um, this therapy. So we achieved our primary endpoint at 18 months and saw um, uh, less low attenuation plaque on follow-up than at baseline and a significant uh, difference between icosapentethyl and placebo, and also saw similar benefits in fibrofatty or soft plaque, fibrous plaque, non-calcified plaque, and total plaque, all were highly statistically significant and showed benefit with icosapentethyl as compared to placebo therapy. The only plaque that didn't statistically um, um, show benefit was calcified plaque or densely calcified plaque, um, which was borderline in its significance with a p-value of 0.053. But certainly, um, um, we know is more stable plaque and maybe less amenable to change over time. How, how many people can be included sort of under the umbrella of appropriate patient population for this agent? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I think that, you know, I think if we just think back to reduce it, it's basically patients with diabetes or anybody with established cardiovascular disease and then the triglyceride cutoff was 135. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the same cutoff in, in Evaporate. The only difference is, is that patients needed to have elevated triglycerides, but they didn't need to have established cardiovascular disease. We just looked for patients with atherosclerosis so we could follow them at baseline and then at follow-up. So, you know, I would say that if you have interest in taking your patients who have established atherosclerosis, and wanting to see that improve over time rather than worsen over time, which is what happened with statin monotherapy, our placebo arm, mm. that this would be a, a consideration for, for treatment with icosapentethyl. But again, the entry criteria triglycerides greater than 135 are similar between the two studies.